Why are vehicles today made from so many different types of materials? I'm Jason Stahl and we're going to find out next in the AirPro Diagnostics Collision Garage. <laughs> Vehicles now are a mix of materials. Aluminum, ultra high strength steel, advanced high strength steel, martensitic steel, boron, magnesium, plastic, carbon fiber. It's all in the name of weight savings while maintaining safety to hit the government corporate average fuel economy mandates. And now, with electric vehicles emerging, light weighting is even more rampant as automakers try to figure out how to extend range and battery life. Also, ADAS has played a role in light weighting. The more electronics you add to a vehicle, you increase the vehicle's overall weight. Somewhere, that weight has to come out. The answer so far has been lighter body materials. As automakers continue to make vehicles stronger yet lighter for fuel savings, more and more aluminum will appear in vehicle structures. You'll also see high strength steel and ultra high strength steel as these metals are lighter in weight too, but stronger, offering more protection for vehicle occupants but aluminum by far will be the material of choice. It is the fastest growing automotive material and is expected to grow to content levels of 514 pounds per vehicle by 2026. Doors represent the single highest net growth application of aluminum content per vehicle, with penetration reaching 30% by 2026. Also by 2026, aluminum hood penetration is expected to reach 81% and lift gates and tailgates reaching 44%. Smaller vehicles more than likely will continue to have high percentages of high strength steel as it may not be beneficial to use more expensive materials such as aluminum, carbon fiber, and magnesium. With larger vehicles, using aluminum for weight reduction has more advantages cost-wise in manufacturing. Everyone shudders when they hear the word corrosion. Corrosion protection has always been a major concern with making a vehicle last to the end of life of the vehicle, which is why the type of material used and where it is located is considered. A steel bumper reinforcement in the front would be subject to a severely corrosive environment, so an aluminum part might be more beneficial due to its corrosion resistant properties. Better methods of combining dissimilar materials such as steel and aluminum have made hybrid construction much more feasible. No longer is it just one choice. Manufacturers have different options as to what they can use to achieve the desired results. These different materials have different repair, attachment, and welding requirements. The only way to know where these materials are and what they are is by accessing the OEM repair procedures. Then you also find out the recommended repair method, if repair is recommended at all. It might be recommended that you replace the part, or weld bond, or adhesive bond, or MIG braze, or spot weld. They may require a certain type of welder and welding wire. Going at the repair the way you always have in the past could jeopardize your livelihood, your employees' livelihood, and the lives of the occupants of the vehicle. Materials are going to continue to grow and evolve when it comes to vehicle construction. Shops must be prepared for the identification of these materials, their location, and recommended or required repair procedures from the OEM. We can't just assume a part is made from the same material we were used to in the past. I'm Jason Stahl from the AirPro Diagnostics Collision Garage. Thanks for watching.